So um, I'll start off with what is biodiversity. Bi biodiversity, that word, is, is a relatively new word in our, our vocabulary. It's a combination of two words, biological and diversity. Um, so it means the variety of life. I mean, that, that's the way it's been used. Um, and, and most people think of it as a number of species that are out there. So the Korea rea or New Zealand falcon is one of our many bird species in New Zealand. We'll see a whole lot of plants up, up, up the valley here. We'll go for our walk later on. That's sort of the way most people think about biodiversity, um, you know, the diversity of species that are out there. But we actually, when we talk about biodiversity um, in a more um, scientific or a broader sense, we actually also want to, we're also interested in how much variation is within a species. So for these Kareria populations, you know, how much gen genetic diversity is in that population? Because that's a really important to help that species be adaptable to changing conditions, being able to evolve into the future. And then we're also interested in the ecosystems that that species occurs in. And you know, for a mobile species like a Kareria, it utilises rock bluffs and grassland as over forests, so it needs a, a range of ecosystems. So, so biodiversity and the way it's defined internationally encapsulates all three of those, although we most commonly talk about the middle one, the species diversity. So I guess the thing I'm trying to say here is recognising that species have these other components around them, the variation within the species and the ecosystems they occur in. And of course, biodiversity refers to the diversity of life. That's all of life, so it includes exotic and native species. But when we talk about biodiversity in the context of New Zealand, and particularly in the context of, of our planning systems and, and our auditing systems that we're using, we're referring to native biodiversity. So the, the tui or the kōwhai, and we'll see a lot of kōwhai. It must have been absolutely staggering here when your kōwhai is flowering. There are so many kōwhai up the gully there. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a beautiful plant, but these are native species. And so when we're talking about biodiversity, we're generally talking about native species, as opposed to things like willows and mustelids and these different exotic species that we have brought to New Zealand. So a native species is a species that's arrived in New Zealand of its own accord, it's dispersed here, or its ancestor dispersed here at some point. Whereas exotic species we either brought deliberately or they arrived accidentally in New Zealand, but as part of human, human activities. And I'm not saying that exotic species are all bad. A lot of exotic species can play really important roles to support native biodiversity. But it's just recognising it's the native species we're primarily interested in. And we have an awful lot of native species. Our native biodiversity is actually surprisingly rich in New Zealand. Um, if we look at um, the groups we know the most about, which are plants and, and animals of backbones, the vertebrate animals, we've got something like 2,200 native species of plant in New Zealand and maybe 1,500 species of vertebrate animals. So that's fish, birds, reptiles, you know, those, those sorts of things. Um, and, and there are certainly quite a few species of those, but they're actually dwarfed by the number of, 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 of perhaps less conspicuous species. We think we've got about 25,000 species of insects and spiders, the invertebrates, um, maybe 22,000 species of fungi, um, we don't really know, and maybe 18,000 species of nematodes and worms. Um, we're incredibly diverse in those groups, but we're also very ignorant of those groups. So for our fungi, maybe only 30% of the species have been described. The worms is probably even less. Whereas for our vascular plants and our vertebrate animals, it's 80 to 90%. We, we know those groups really well. So we do have a, 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 an awful lot of species in New Zealand, and, and, and they, are, um, they are quite distinctive and unique to New Zealand. So that, that's my next point, is that many of our species, most of our species, in fact, only occur in New Zealand. And we use the word endemic to describe that. It means they only occur here. And some of them are endemic to particular areas of New Zealand. So you go into Fiordland and there are endemic species in Fiordland. There are endemic species on the Otago, Central Otago mountain ranges. There are endemic species in, in um, Northwest Nelson, Kahurangi National Park. They only occur in those areas. But if we look at the whole country, about 72% of our birds are endemic to New Zealand. They only occur in New Zealand. 84% of our vascular plants. 81% of our insects, you know, most of our freshwater fish, all of our reptiles, frogs and bats, um, we can only, they only occur here. It's different for our marine mammals, of course, because you know, they move around the oceans and, and we share them with other countries. So not only do we have a lot of biodiversity in New Zealand, most of it only occurs in New Zealand, which means we can only look after it in New Zealand. So things like Archie's frog, one of our endemic frogs, um, occurs um, up in the Coromandel in Northland. Um, the Okarito um, um, brown kiwi on the right there, one of our many hebes, these are all endemic species, they only occur in New Zealand.
One of our concerns, of course, and, and the reason why biodiversity is becoming such a major issue is that biodiversity has been declining. And it's been declining for um, a range of reasons over, quite, over the whole period of human settlement of New Zealand. But it's easy as farmers to feel that you guys are really in the, in the limelight and, and you're being blamed for all this biodiversity loss. But actually biodiversity loss is a lot more complicated than that. And, and we see changes in what's been driving biodiversity loss through time. So with Māori settlement and early European settlement, we had a lot of habitat loss. Um, we had extensive fires in the eastern South Island, not so much down here, but certainly from, um, say, Dunedin northwards, um, right up through Canterbury into Marlborough, with early, early Māori settlement, Polynesian settlement. We had massive fires that just destroyed everything. And again, with early European settlement, we had huge fire. I mean, I spent most of my time in in my career in Christchurch and Banks Peninsula lost its forest cover over about 30 years. Um, trees were felled to build Christchurch and other settlements. And we also had with um, both Māori settlement and the early phases of European settlement, you know, quite substantial impacts of invasive species. Um, with, with the Polynesians, when they arrived in New Zealand, they had Kiori, the Polynesian rat, and they had the Polynesian dog. Um, and those two things had a huge impact. Then, of course, when our Pākehā ancestors arrived here, we had a whole raft of other species arriving in New Zealand, and, and that still continue to impact biodiversity today. Um, and we also had exploitation, particularly of birds like moa, um, during the period of Māori settlement. But as we move into sort of the more recent period, um, habitat loss is really not that important. And I think as we move into the future, invasive species are still the dominant driver of biodiversity decline, whether it's predators like mustelids, possums, ungulates, uh, feral deer, goats, pigs, uh, or invasive plants, wild and conifers and, and, and the like. Uh, they're going to continue to be important. But climate change is the other factor that's really coming in. And then the interactions that occur because of, of climate change. And so, and, and I was interested to hear yesterday, we spoke up at um, Seacliff, yes, and uh, I was talking about banana passion vine, which is a quite a bad um, exotic plant in the North Island. It's starting to turn up in Banks Peninsula, and they were telling me it's also around there. So I'm not sure if it's this far south, but we're seeing plants like that moving further south. It is down here as well, yeah. So these things are going to continue to move south with climate change. The other thing we're seeing, of course, is a lot more fire. That's the Port Hills fire from 2017. Um, we're going to see a lot more fire. Um, it's just, unfortunately, um, one of the realities of, of the changing world. And these factors are going to be really big drivers of biodiversity loss in New Zealand as well. The final thing I want to mention in this introductory bit is just to make the point that the terms rare and threatened are often um, quite mixed up and and used in confusing ways um, in the media in particular. And you'll often hear the minister, um, a government minister standing up and saying there's 4,000 threatened plants in New Zealand, sorry, 4,000 threatened species in New Zealand. And it's important to recognise as farmers, you know, you guys have got a lot of these species on your farms. But we actually distinguish between species that are genuinely threatened with extinction from those that are ranked as at risk. And this at risk group, particularly in the plants, is a really large group. And so when they say 4,000 species are threatened, they actually mean 4,000 species are threatened or at risk of extinction. And in this at-risk group, there's a big chunk of plants that are called naturally uncommon. So they're things that aren't particularly widespread. They might be a geothermal plant or a plant of limestone outcrop, so they've got a very limited distribution. Um, they're not necessarily threatened of extinction, but because they're naturally uncommon, they're put into that category there. And, and it's worth um, just being aware of that because the language is used quite loosely. Um, the genuinely threatened thing, so this is for our birds, so all of our birds, 130 odd species, uh, just over a third are genuinely threatened of extinction. So things like Pheo, uh, the blue duck, um, they're threatened because of predation primarily. Another over a third are either declining or naturally uncommon. Uh, and then a smaller group are, are not threatened. But for our plants, it's only about 20% are threatened, but there's a large group that are naturally uncommon. They're not necessarily threatened of extinction. Matagari belongs in that group. Um, uh, Manuka belongs in that group. There are a range of things in there that for various reasons have been classified into here, but they're not genuinely threatened. And it's just worth being aware, because to me, as, a, as an ecologist, it's the plants in this group here, or the birds in this group here, that are the most important ones for us to focus on in our management, because they are the things that are actually threatened. And unfortunately, this sort of, including these, confuses the argument. So Pheo, blue duck, this is Hector's tree daisy. We're going to see some tree daisies here. Um, these are genuinely threatened species. 
Unfortunately for other groups like fungi, we just don't know. Um, the grey bar indicates we don't know. Um, we just don't, don't know. It's just the way it is. We have no knowledge. So that's sort of the first part of the presentation and, and really just wanted to just bring you all, make sure you're all you know, are comfortable with what we mean when we use the word biodiversity. We're primarily referring to native species, um, acknowledging that there are quite a, a lot of them out there. They're often quite poorly known and most of them are endemic to New Zealand, which means of course we can only manage them here. And really the biggest threats to those species uh, are, are, in, are invasions and climate change. So any questions about that?